Hello everyone and welcome back to When We Were Young. This is a series where we dive deep into fandom and pop culture from the early 2000s. My name is Kim and I'll be your host as we travel down memory lane. Today we're discussing one of my personal favorite Fuel by Ramen bands, The Academy Is. So you might notice that I'm not in my usual filming location today. That is because I've decided to take a little staycation at Universal Orlando this week. And I thought, what better time to record this chill, laid-back video than right here, right now, in my comfy hotel room. That means no special outfit today either, but honestly... This band didn't really have that distinct of a fashion style anyway. They were more about the band t-shirts and skinny jeans, and that's kind of what I'm going for today. But before we get into it, if you like what I'm doing here, please leave a like and subscribe for more videos. I upload a new one at least once a month, so you want to keep an eye out for that. I also have a playlist of all of my old videos in this series, so please, please, please check them out. All right, so let's talk about The Academy Is. The band was founded in 2003 by singer William Beckett, guitarist Mike Carden, and bassist Adam Siska, who all went to high school together in Barrington, Illinois. Initially, they called the band The Academy, but to avoid a lawsuit with the whole Oscars thing, they added the is at the end of the name. Punctuation in band names was very hip back then. Guitarist AJ Latrace and drummer Michael Del Principe were soon added to the lineup, completing the band for now. More on the lineup changes in just a little bit. The Academy Is, or Ty, as I'm going to call them for time's sake, released six records in their eight years of existence, three full-length albums and three EPs. Released in March 2004 by LLR Records, the band's first EP was a self-titled called The Academy, then later changed to The Academy Is, to reflect their new band name. The album featured six tracks, The Proverbial Unrest, The Author, Judas Kiss, In Our Defense, Dear Interceptor, and Absolution. Fun fact, my username, Shoddy Content, comes from a lyric in their song, Judas Kiss. Oh, Mr. Shoddy Content swept all your dignity under the carpet. I don't know why that specific lyric jumped out at me. They had so many great lyrics at the time, but here we are, 20 years later, still rocking the handle. And um, it kind of fits the vibe of the channel, doesn't it? All the lyrics on this EP were written by William Beckett and featured all of the original band members. Punknews.org gave this EP two out of five stars, which is pretty low, but despite the lackluster critical review, the EP was enough to catch the attention of one Pete Wentz. That's right, Ty is part of the Pete Wentz cinematic universe. Symphonic universe? Whatever. They occupied a space within the Chicago music scene, which means they were inevitably pulled into Pete's orbit, and they were soon signed to the Fuel by Ramen record label in late 2004. It was soon thereafter that Ty was taken on multiple tours with the likes of Fall Out Boy, Armor for Sleep, Bayside, and Less Than Jake. By the end of summer 2004, the guys headed down to St. Clouds, Florida, that's just up the street from me, to record their first full-length album, Almost Here, at Wisner Productions with producer James Paul Wisner. Just before the release of Almost Here, however, the band went through a lineup change. The three founding members remained while AJ Latrace and Michael Del Principe made their exit. They were quickly replaced with 504 Plan guitarist Tom Conrad and Andy the Butcher Mrotek on drums. Upon its release, Almost Here debuted at number 186 on the Billboard Hot 200 charts. It also featured at number 24 on the Billboard Indie Album charts. Critics received the album well enough with Absolute Punk giving it an 89%. The band hit the ground running with the release of this album and featured on back-to-back -to -back tours with other big-name label mates at this time. 
From March to May of 2005, they toured with Fall Out Boy, Gym Class Heroes, Midtown, and Silverstein on the Fuel by Ramen and Friends tour. They also played Bamboozle this year. It seemed every month of 2005 was spent on a tour, and in 2006, they continued with a sold-out UK tour opening for Panic at the Disco. Later, they went on to headline their own Truck Stops and State Lines tour with Panic at the Disco, Acceptance, and Hello Goodbye. And by summer 2006, the band was headed out on their very first Vans Warp Tour. Touring isn't all they did, however. This album featured singles, check marks, slow down, and the phrase that pays, all of which had music videos, which can still be viewed on YouTube at this time. In 2006, following the success of Almost Here, the band released an EP called From the Carpet, which was basically just covers and remixes of already released music. The Fever and Pour Yourself a Drink were the only unreleased tracks on this EP. In October 2006, it was announced that guitarist Tom Conrad had left The Academy Is. There was a short statement on The Academy Is's official website about it, and Tom also released a statement of his own on his website at the time, forevernever.net. Here is the official Thai statement. Quote, After two years on the road together, Tom and The Academy Is have gone their separate directions. William, Mike, Adam, and The Butcher can be found in an abandoned warehouse somewhere on the south side of Chicago writing their second album. While we are not too excited about the potential internet drama this news might invite, we felt our fans should know. We hope you understand and continue to support both The Academy Is and Tom. End quote. Of course, there was internet drama about this, and for good reason. It seems there was more to the story than just creative differences. Thanks to LiveJournal archivists and the Wayback Machine, I was able to get a little more insight into the end of Tom Conrad's short stint in The Academy Is. In an interview with Bullseye.com, Mike Carden makes a statement about it. It's kind of long, so I've linked it below, and you can pause to read it here. But basically, Mike blames Warp Tour for the band sort of spiraling into a dark place. He says Tom never recorded anything on Almost Here, and he was kicked out before he had a chance to record on Santi. To Mike, Tom was only ever a touring member of the band, so they had a conversation about it, and he left. Then he goes on to call Tom salty, which is like, dude... So not the vibe. Of course, commenters on live journal gossip sites ate that up, claiming that Mike never really liked Tom, and so it was ultimately his decision when it came time to kick Tom out. From the way back machine, I was able to pull one singular post from Tom's old website, an interview he had apparently done with AP about the topic. Once again, pause to read, but basically, when asked about his contributions to the creative process, Tom said, quote, I was never involved in the writing for Santi, nor was I ever welcomed into the creative process. Butcher and I weren't a part of the writing process for almost here either. This made things unbalanced between everyone. We both joined the band right after the album was completed, which I believe made things hard coming into the band. I was concerned why members were removed so quickly after the record was finished, but I took the opportunity anyways. Since I was not part of the creative process, things were not as fulfilling. Bill and Mike have their own way of doing things. I was never needed for the writing process, but nor did I ever really fight to be a part of it. Regardless of everything, there wasn't much songwriting that was completed together during the two years of touring. End quote. And when asked about Warp Tour being the darkest part of the band, Tom did agree that it wasn't great. Although, really, every member of the Academy is would agree that they just weren't a Warp Tour-esque band. He went on to say that the real downturn of the band was more around the time of their headlining tour with Panic at the Disco. Quote, Warp Tour, however, was not where the morale significantly dropped within the band. It began during our sold-out headlining tour with Panic at the Disco, where the shows started feeling like a co-headlining tour to the leaders of the band, end quote. The Truck Stops and State Lines tour was meant to be Ty's big break, but it was Panic at the Disco who was really blowing up in the scene at the time. This caused a lot of pressure and infighting that led to negative vibes all around. It was Drummer the Butcher who ultimately broke the news to Tom that he was getting kicked out. Apparently, Mike and William were dragging their feet, taking way too long just to come out and say it. 
Being Tom's friend since before they'd even joined the band, Butcher was looking out for Tom and in that moment just ripped the Band-Aid right off for him. And that's kind of it. I'll get more into what Tom's up to these days in just a little bit. For now, it was April 2007 and the Academy is a sophomore album, Santi, was released. This album was produced by Butch Walker, who was a pretty big producer in indie and Fuel by Ramen scene at the time. The members of Ty grew up enjoying his music and when introduced to the right people were able to get him to produce Santi. The album was almost named Chop Chop, but they changed the name to call it Santi instead, which was an inside joke between the guys of the band. It was a word that they used to describe anything that was awesome and cool, so it makes sense that they would name their second album that. The music was slightly different from their debut album. The band had really found their sound in this record after their own critiques that Almost Here was almost a little overproduced for their taste. I personally love Santi, even though it was a completely different direction from Almost Here. Chart-wise, it debuted at number 32 on the Billboard Top 200 chart, which was streets ahead of Almost Here. Absolute Punk gave the album an 84%, while Rolling Stone only gave it a 2.5 out of 5 stars. Can't win them all. There were three singles released for this album. We've Got a Big Mess on Our Hands, Everything We Had, and Neighbors. All of the lyrics were written by William Beckett, whilst the songs were recorded by the entire band, including the replacement guitarist for Tom Conrad, an Australian dude named Michael Guy Chislett. In promotion for the album, the Academy is went on to the 2007 Honda Civic Tour with Fall Out Boy. Later that year, they headlined their own tour, Sleeping with Giants, with Cobra Starship, The Rocket Summer, and Armor for Sleep as their openers. All in all, Santi was a good second album that kept the momentum of their first album going. And then in 2008, just two months after I graduated high school, and probably at least five years after all of the band members had graduated high school, the Academy is released their third full-length album, Fast Times at Barrington High. Now look, by all accounts, this album was a commercial and critical success, but for us in the fandom... It just wasn't it. Maybe it was just me, but it felt really weird for these mid-20-somethings to be waxing poetic about emotional high school experiences. But that's just, like, my opinion, man. Produced by S.A.M. and Sluggo and recorded in New York City, Fast Times was released to great success. It debuted at number 17 on the Hot Billboard 200 charts, their highest debut yet, and it was named 46th Best Album of 2008 by Rolling Stone, despite the same publication only giving the album 3 out of 5 stars. Absolute Punk gave it a 68%, so I guess it wasn't all favorable. The songs on this album had a lot more features than before as well. Gabe Saporta, Ryland Blackington, and Alex Suarez from the band Cobra Starship all lent their vocal talents on Crowded Room, About a Girl, and His Girl Friday, respectively. Mason Musso and Blake Healy of Metro Station also provided their creative input on a couple of tracks. Mason provided vocals for Crowded Room, and Blake played piano for His Girl Girl Friday and Summer Hair equals Forever Young. Finally, Andrew McMahon of Jack's Mannequin and Something Corporate provided piano for the song after the last Midtown show. <laughs> I don't know if that was enough or what. About a Girl, Summer Hair equals Forever Young, His Girl Friday, and The Test were all singles released for this album, but only the first two songs have videos available on YouTube. In promotion of this album, the band went on the road. They headlined a tour called Bill and Trav's Bogus Journey with We the Kings, Carolina Liar, and Hey Monday. They also went on an Australian tour with Anne Berlin. The album name comes from the movie Fast Times at Ridgemont High and Barrington High, which was the place where William, Mike, and Adam went to school. Basically, the place where the Academy is all began. Post Fast Times, the band released one more EP. It was called Lost in Pacific Time, and it was released in September 2009. It featured five new songs, I'm Yours Tonight, Days Like Masquerades, Sputter, New York, and In the Rear View. This would be the final contribution of guitarist Michael Guy Chislett and drummer The Butcher. It was announced in May 2011 that they would both be leaving to pursue their own musical careers. And while it was announced that the remaining three members of the band would be entering the studio to record a fourth album, that album never came. 
In October 2011, in their official Facebook page, it was announced that the band had decided to go separate ways, but that they'd all be working on new music individually. Okay, so who even is the Academy is? Much like the New Jersey music scene of the 90s and 2000s, the Chicago music scene was interconnected in a lot of weird ways as well. Even in the suburbs of Barrington, high school kids jumped from band to band until something clicked. And if it didn't click, they'd just break up and try again with some other project. That said, AJ Latrace, the original guitarist of the Academy is, started his musical venture in a band called Farewell Night with John Walker. Yes, that John Walker from Panic at the Disco. But he was soon recruited into the Academy is just in time to play, quote, 95% of the guitar parts on Almost Here. Due to issues within the band, or more specifically with Mike Carden, AJ left just after Almost Here was recorded. These days, AJ is still active on Twitter, and it seems he's got a pretty successful career in real estate in the Chicago area. He also does some freelance journalism on the side, and you can find his website linked below. In 2022, he rejoined the Academy as for one short stint to play Riot Fest that year. He was joined with fellow alumni Michael De Principe. Speaking of Michael Del Principe, he was around the music sphere in Chicago back in the day as well. He and Mike Carden were friends and also played together in a band called Jody. He was asked to join Ty around the same time as AJ and left with him as well, claiming similar reasons regarding Mike Carden. These days, he plays drums in Bronson Rock and Taking Back Emo. I'll also link down below an interview that he did in 2022 with the Cozy representative on YouTube because it was a pretty good look into the Chicago music scene at the time. Tom Conrad was brought in to replace AJ Latrace on guitar in 2005, but his stint in Thai was short-lived as I've discussed. Prior to his time in Thai, he was in a band called 504 Plan with Nick Schmecka, another well-known figure in the Chicago music scene, and John Walker. There he is again. I'm telling you, that Chicago music scene is incestuous. Now, as we know from before, Tom Conrad never officially contributed to the Academy as his albums, but he was in the band officially until he was kicked out in 2006. Immediately after his departure, he joined Panic at the Disco as a tour photographer on their Nothing Rhymes with Circus tour. He and John Walker were besties, so it was the perfect post-tie gig for him. He continued his photography on his blog, ForeverNever.net, which is now defunct, and all that remains are the prints that I bought my besties once upon a time. Beyond photography, Tom also went on to start his own band, Empires, with singer Sean Van Fleet, bassist Max Steger, and Ryan Luciani on drums. Tangent time! Empires is one of my favorite bands of all time. The guys in that band were so sweet and so down to earth, I made it a point to see them every single time that they toured. If you go back far enough in my channel, I have uploaded two Empire songs called Darko and Dreamer, and I've been told by other Empires fans that this is the only way that they can listen to this music, because these two songs were B-sides and they were never put on any official album, and so they are otherwise lost to time. So go check out those videos, listen to the music, check them out on Spotify. They're so good. I love that band so much. Empires broke up without announcement or fanfare around 2015. There was no explanation, no reasons given. They just simply stopped making music, stopped posting, and my heart is forever broken just thinking about it. The lead singer of Empires, Sean Van Fleet, has moved on to a new band called Blame My Youth, and they're pretty good, but they're no Empires. And Tom Conrad has settled in Brooklyn. As far as I know, he's the founder of a management company called Era Management. He often promotes a band called The Rat Boys on social media, but otherwise... There's not much to say. Tom Conrad was replaced with guitarist Michael Guy Chislett, an Australian man who has often toured with producer of Santi Butch Walker. Michael fit right in with the guys. Even Mike Carden praised how well they got along in an interview just after he joined the band. But before Ty called it quits in 2011, it was announced that Michael Guy would be leaving to pursue his own music career. What music career, you ask? Well, he became the lead guitarist and a founding member of a Christian worship band called Hillsong United. If you're thinking Hillsong, I've heard that name before. What is that? What is, how, how do I know that name? Well, that is the name of an infamously problematic Hillsong church. 
Down below, I will link a video about Hillsong Church and their drama over the years, but suffice to say, I think it's a weird career move. Of course, that is not to say that anybody in this band or any of the members involved in the church, including MGC, are problematic. Lots of innocent people attend problematic churches all of the time. I just think learning about weird culty churches is fun, so if you're interested, check below. To this day, Michael Guy Chislett performs all over the world with Hillsong United and good for him. Andy Mrochek, aka The Butcher, got that nickname from having a job in a butcher shop. Yes, very creative boys. Wonderful. Anyway, The Butcher was well known in the Milwaukee music scene at the time. Apparently the whole Midwest is super tight. Prior to Ty, he was in a punk band that made fun of boy bands, Exhibit A. He must have been one hell of a drummer because seeing that photo would make me second guess his invitation to the band entirely. <laughs> Butcher joined the Academy as at the same time as Tom Conrad, but left at the same time as his replacement, Michael Guy Chislett. In a joint post on TAI.com, the band announced that both MGC and The Butcher will be moving on to pursue their own creative projects. In The Butcher's case, that meant pursuing his physical artwork. He was a prolific artist on paper too, often selling prints and paintings that he'd done in his free time. Musically, he went on to create a project called The Animal Upstairs, and in 2022, he created an album called Florida Man under the name Yime. So I guess he lives in Florida now? Howdy, neighbor. When the time came for the Academy as reunion shows, however, Butcher took the call. He returned in 2015 for Riot Fest and again in 2022 for all of their most recent shows. Adam T. Siska, a.k.a. Bass Wiz Siski Biz, a.k.a. Siski Business. What is with these nicknames? Seriously. All right, so Adam Siska was the younger brother of William Beckett's high school friend, Jason Siska. Are you connecting the dots? They all went to high school together, and at Jason's 18th birthday, William and Mike met Adam, and the rest is history. Siski remained in the band from beginning to end, always returning for every reunion show. In the downtimes between the Academy of sets, he's a touring bassist for Carly Rae Jepsen, and I love that for him. He also offers services on Cameo and guitar lessons over Zoom. Mike Carden, the Academy is his Rhythm guitarist was another member that has been there from beginning to end. And in quotation marks, because despite their hiatus announcement in 2011, this really does feel like the band that never ends. Despite being notoriously difficult to work with, Mike, Adam, and William managed to create 20 years of music together. And that's not to say that Mike is a bad guy. I don't know him. But given some of the past member statements, well, let's just say Mike's intense. There were several issues throughout the years involving Mike, gaining him the reputation of being kind of an asshole. Sometimes it was about how he'd pull Adam's hair or that playful wrestling would become a bloody brawl. Obviously, multiple band members left over creative disagreements with Mike, and it's been said that the writing process between William and Mike was often like a fight. Both were headstrong creatives with opinions on how things should be. Mike and William were sort of an enemies to bandmates story. Rivals in the Chicago music scene, Mike was in a band called Jody. And when that band fell through, he was asked to join new up-and-comers The Academy Is. And so he and William put their differences aside and created a killer new band. Allegedly, he was meant to be a fifth member of Fall Out Boy at one point. I'm kind of glad that didn't pan out. Fall Out Boy had enough egos and issues back in the day. I can't imagine how a Mike Carden type would have done anything to help that situation. Besides returning for all of Ty's reunion shows, Mike Carden also started the artist group in 2017 with Gabe Saporta of Cobra Starship. They focus on finding and representing new artists in the scene, such as Tessa Violet, Days or May, and Against the Current. And finally, William Beckett, lead singer of the Academy is. He's also pretty good at playing piano and guitar, but within Ty, he's mainly just the singer and lyric writer. Prior to the Academy is, William was in a solo acoustic project called Remember Maine. That didn't last very long, but it was long enough to garner attention to put Ty on the map when it finally came time. Post The Academy Is, William put out a ton of solo music. He went on solo tours and was even available to hire to play at private parties. One of my friends actually attended a private party with William 
performing ones, and I cringe every time they tell that story. These days, he's mostly focused on the Academia's reunion shows. Of all the members of the band, he definitely seems the most keen, especially on Twitter, to finally come back and make some new music. He also shows up on occasion as a guest on live performances, like with Fall Out Boy during their Tortoise LA show. Welcome to the fan quotes and anecdotes section of the video. Yay, we're here, we made it. Now, I'm obviously a huge fan of the band. I've seen them play multiple times. I was fully starstruck when I first met William Beckett. I think... At one point, I had a photo with him, but that is lost to the passage of time. I remember telling him, I've been waiting so long to meet you. And he replied something like, then it's all led up to this moment. Cringe respects cringe, I guess. They were always really sweet band. And up until that disappointing third album, I was a diehard fan. Probably bigger than any of the other bands on the music scene at the time. But... I'm not the only diehard Thai girl that I know. My friend Sarah Ann was kind enough to participate in this month's video where she answered a few questions I sent her about her time in the fandom. Sarah was a super fan from 2006 where she first heard their song Skeptics and True Believers on their MySpace page. That is the song off of their first album, Almost Here. She went and saw them for the first time in 2007 on the Honda Civic Tour with Fall Out Boy and thought they were absolutely amazing they stole the show and she was hooked from that moment on the academy has had a fan club called santi's little helpers and she was absolutely a part of that club she always got vip and meet and greets whenever she could it was actually to the point where she would even go out to dinner with the band sometimes because she was such a regular around their camp at an acoustic show in lawrence william even called her out on stage for talking during their set but after the show he said he only did that because he remembered her and he knew she could take a joke when i asked her what her favorite album was she said fast times quote it's relatable to anyone who was lost when they were a kid and still speaks to her that way end quote she doesn't have a least favorite album, obviously, but if she had to choose, it'd be Lost in Pacific Time because it was only an EP and not a full-length album. Even with all of the time that's passed and the lack of new music over the last 10 plus years, Sarah's love has never faltered. She says they always have been and always will be her favorite band. And we love that kind of consistent commitment. Thank you so much to Sarah Ann for participating in the fan quotes and anecdotes section of this video. If you'd like to participate in a future video, please message me on Instagram. I've linked that below. So that's the story of the Academy is the little band that never could but always would anyway. They were unfortunately always outbid by their fellow label mates, striving for the careers of Panic at the Disco or Fall Out Boy, but always falling just short. That doesn't mean that the music that they created wasn't amazing. It's certainly worth listening to, in my opinion, even Fast Times. You can check out all of their old music on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, wherever you get your music. And if you get lucky, you might even catch them on a random tour date. They do put on a pretty good live show. Who knows? Maybe we'll finally get that fourth album soon. Lord knows they've been teasing it enough online. Until then, thank you all so, so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up. Comment down below what you thought. Subscribe for more. Check out the playlist. Share this video, etc. I will see you all in the next one.